In the previous movie, we used the MASH toolkit to add a plexus sphere and ring to our Earth object. In this movie, we'll give them a little pop by animating them. You can either continue working from your previous file, or load the provided MASH UI Part 3 Start, provided in the link in the description. Animating a Maya is much like animating in traditional hand animation. You start by snapshotting a scene in a certain state at one point in time, known as keyframing, then snapshot a different state at a later point in time, letting Maya fill in everything in between. Maya keeps track of time via the time slider, which is divided into frames rather than seconds. By default, 24 frames makes up one second, though this is customizable. For this tutorial, we'll leave it as is. Let's start with a simple animation of rotating the Earth. Like the ring in the previous movie, we need to add a transform node if we want to transform the Earth, so select the MASH Earth object and create one. Notice that if you alter the Y rotation of this node, it spins the Earth. So to animate the Earth spinning, we just need to set keyframes on this value. Go to frame 1 in the time slider, then right click the Y rotation value. Select Set Key. The attribute turns red and a red line is drawn in the time slider to indicate that its state has been captured. Next, go to frame 120. If your time slider doesn't go that far, you can change it via the values on the far right side under the time slider. Set the Y value to 180 and set another key. Now if you play the scene, you can see that the Earth spins 180 degrees in 5 seconds. However, notice how it starts off spinning slow, then revs up, before slowing down again near the end. This ease-in, ease-out behavior isn't really what we want for this particular animation. To fix this, we'll use the graph editor found in the Windows Animation Editor section. The graph is a visual representation of the attribute value over time. First, press the F key to frame the graph and make it easier to see. Notice how the graph moves up representing the increasing value of the rotation. However, these curved ends are the reason for its slow start and finish. To fix that, select both ends and click the Linear Tangents button. This straightens them out. Now if you go back and replay the scene, you can see that the Earth spins consistently. While we're here, add a very minor rotation on the x-axis just so the Earth isn't completely straight. We don't need to animate this, it's just to add a bit of variation. Now using the exact same process, add transform nodes to the bolts and plexus layers as well, to make them spin along with the globe. With all the globe elements spinning in tune, let's animate the ring next. Recalling from the previous tutorial, we already created a transform node for the ring, which we can reuse. However, notice that if you try to spin it using the Y rotation, the ring actually wobbles. This is because it's taking our other rotations into account, so zero them out for now. Also, rather than spinning from 0 to 180, let's spin the ring from 0 to negative 180, so it runs counter to the Earth. And again use the graph editor to ensure it spins at a constant rate. To add the ring's lean back, go to MASH RING and add another transform node. Input your previous lean values into this. Now the ring spins correctly and still leans nicely. However, we can do even more with this. Let's also animate it pulsing by using the replicator node's random strength attribute. Start by going to frame 1 in the time slider, then set a key on the current random strength value. Next, go to frame 12, decrease the random strength value, and set another key. Now if you drag the time slider between frames 1 and 12, you can see how the ring shrinks randomly. Go to frame 24 and increase the random strength value back to the same number as frame 1. 
This sets up a cycle of the replicants decreasing and then increasing again. However, unlike our spin animations, this one doesn't fill all 120 frames. We could manually key the value up and down over and over, or we can once again use the graph editor to repeat it automatically. First select the mash ring replicator's random envelope curve in the list to isolate it. Then press the F key to frame the graph. Notice that this time the graph is a wave, representing the way the random strength decreases and increases. Go to View Infinity to see what the rest of the time slider looks like. Notice that after our keyframes, the graph levels off, indicating that random strength remains a single value. To change this, select the curve and go to Curves, Post Infinity, Cycle to make the curve repeat itself forever. Judging by our new graph, the value should now constantly go up and down. And if you play the scene, you can see that is indeed the case. Finally, we can animate the ring being created. Rather than frame 1, this time start at frame 12. Go to the Distribute tab and set Step Strength to 0, then set a key. If we want the ring creation to happen over 2 seconds, then we'll need to set our next key at frame 60. Go to frame 60 and set Step Strength to negative 1, then set another key. This will ensure the ring is created in the same direction that it's spinning. And like our various spin animations, we don't want the ring creation to ease in, ease out either, so return to the graph editor and make all the tangents linear. Our globe looks a lot livelier now, thanks to all this animation. In the next movie, we'll show you how to create a rotating HUD element that's constrained to the camera.